All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to give all glory and praise unto my power, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Shalom to all you sincere the true believers. Right, today's lesson, as you can see, uh, let go from the mortal thoughts, right? And of course, that's referring to the scripture, 2nd Ezra 14 and verse 14. Let's go ahead and grab it. Right, it says, let go from the mortal thoughts, cast away the burdens of man, and put off now the weak nature, right? So the point is, right, what I want to get into is like worry. You see what I'm saying? Because that whole spirit of worry, right, comes from like a, 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 you know, being like faithless. You see what I'm saying? And ultimately, in this, in this truth, we're required to what? To, to have faith, right? Because we understand that what? Right. There's a lot of there's a lot of promises within these scriptures that talk about what salvation, uh, uh, the preservation of the elect, delivering uh, the elect out of temptation, the godly man, you know, re uh, recompensing him a reward. So we have faith that all of these things are going to going to come true. You see what I'm saying? And we actually even start to see man, those things manifesting, you know, as our as our faith continues to grow, the heavenly father will reward that faith by having things manifest in your life. In certain ways, you see what I'm saying by re rewarding your, you know, uh, uh, you 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 having faith in Him, right? Because that pleases the Heavenly Father. Let's get this Hebrews chapter eleven and verse six. It says, "But without faith, it is impossible to please Him, for he that cometh to the Heavenly Father must believe that He is." So, being in His truth, you can't be doubting. You see what I'm saying? Now, is it times that when you first come in, you know, what I'm saying you may be a little weak in the spirit. Satan's still trying to, you know, uh, 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 rattle your mind and things like that. That'll happen. You see what I'm saying? But as you continue to progress more and more in the, uh, in the truth, that doubt should leave you. You see what I'm saying? And then ultimately, if you feel as though, because that doubt then leads to worry. Well, what if this happened? What if that happened? What if this happens? Let go from the mortal thoughts. You see what I'm saying? Because going into the Jacob's trouble, we need to have that full assurance of faith. Meaning that what? We're not constantly worried about what things are going to happen because we're rest. We, we, we our, our minds are rest assured in Yahweh, right? The Heavenly Father and His Son Yahweh Shai, right? And, and 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 when you trust in Him fully, this is what happens, right? Isaiah twenty six and three, it says, "Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on Thee, because he trusteth in Thee." And that's the point. It's all about trust, having confidence, right? And the Heavenly Father. And we have to have the confidence that what, man? Let's go ahead and grab this. Philippians 1 and 6. Be confident, right? You see how all of these scriptures are talking about what? Trust, confidence, faith. These are all things. Trust, right? You got to have faith that something is going to get done the way it's supposed to get done or whatever, right? We have trust in the Heavenly Father. We have confidence in the Heavenly Father and His Son, Yahweh Shai, right? We have, we, what did I say? Confidence, trust, and faith. All of these things the scriptures are talking about, right? So what does it say? Philippians 1 and 6, be confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Because as we see prophecy unfolding, right, right, a lot of people sometimes get scared. You see what I'm saying? Now we understand the scriptures talk about what, uh, uh, where's it at? Isaiah 33 and 14, the sinners in Zion are afraid, fearfulness and surprise the hypocrites, right? We understand because you're doing dirt, a lot of people doing dirt. They know that they they got something coming for them around the corner. But there's also there's also some people that what that when uh uh when coming in they they they, they live they they trying to live right they purging out the uh, the old man and things like that. You may just be weak in the spirit and lack faith. You see what I'm saying? Now if that's the case, what you want to do is you want to continue to be tapped in. You want to do spiritual things like fast. You want to pray. You want to read. Right? These are things that you have to do to increase your faith. Right? To, 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 to have the, the Heavenly Father see that you want this and then what's going to happen in return, he's going to draw nigh unto you and, and, and comfort you. You see what I'm saying? And what is that? What is that comforting you? Giving you more faith, man. Giving you more increase of the spirit, right? Let's grab this in James because it's a two-way street with the Heavenly Father and you cannot forget that, man. Just like with anybody else, man. It's a two-way street. If, if you feel like a relationship is one-sided, then ultimately what's going to happen? Eventually you're going to be like, damn, I, I, I ain't really fucking with this. A friendship, it could be a, a relationship with family, it could be anything. You see what I'm saying, right? If you feel like it's one side, it's the same thing with the Heavenly Father, right? So we gotta show the Heavenly Father continually that we want more of the more of the what the Spirit. You see what I'm saying? So by doing that, what's gonna happen is the Heavenly Father gonna see, oh, he really wanted. Just like with a woman, a woman see you, 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 you constantly calling her, 
know what I'm saying? Y'all texting, y'all, you know I mean, y'all, y'all, y'all rapping, things like that. Y'all sharing, you know, getting intimate, th- different things. She gonna say, oh damn, he really, he really like me. You see what I'm saying? Like, and then what's that? What, what, what is that gonna do? If she, you know, she, th- oh, okay, that's gonna have that reciprocated, and that's how it, that's now that's how it go. And then y'all, y'all continue to get closer and closer. You see what I'm saying? As time goes on, that's 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 how it is. With, uh, not saying that, uh, well, the heavenly father is like. I'm just giving you an example. You see what I'm saying? So with the heavenly father, he's our father, right? We got to draw close unto him and he's going to draw close unto you. Plain and simple. That's how relationships go with people in general, friends, anybody, right? It's a two-way street. So we have to draw nigh into the heavenly father. That's the point, y'all, right? And we can't forget, hey, listen, you can't you can't just like uh, expect the heavenly father to do everything. You see what I'm saying? Hey, you're going to have to put some work in, right? James 4 and 6, right? And that working is what? You drawing close to him, right? Exemplified in what? Reading, studying. Do, uh, 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 for brothers, do do your lessons and go out to the hobbies and hedges. If you don't go out to the if you're if you're not there yet, you see what I'm saying? Make sure you do your video. You know what I'm saying? You, you know you know what to do, right? James 4 and 6. James 4 and 7. <laughs> so like James 4 and 8. Draw nigh to the heavenly father. He will draw nigh unto you. Nigh just means close. So draw nigh unto the heavenly father and he will draw nigh unto you. Cleanse your hands, meaning make sure your hands is clean. Make sure you're doing right, because that's gonna have that's gonna show the heavenly father that you really about it too. You you listening to him, right? It's the same thing with a man. You see what I'm saying, right? It's the same thing with a father and a son. The uh, the, the 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 son shows the father that he respects his authority by doing what what he says, and that causes the father to then look at the son favorably and say, yeah, that's my boy right there. You see what I'm saying? That's my boy, right? Showing you why, because that's an obedient child. So what do you want to do as a father? You want to recompense more good into that child. It's the same thing with the heavenly father. So by us being more and more obedient and having clean hands, the scriptures say he that have clean hands shall wax stronger and stronger. So that's the point. Keep your hands clean. Keep your nose clean. You see what I'm saying? Right? Like it says in Cyrax 7 and 1, do no evil and so shall no harm come unto thee. You ain't got to look over your shoulder, right? Because you know what's good, what's, what's coming for you is good. It says evil pursue of sinners. But to the wicked, uh, 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 it's like a roughly paraphrasing, but to the wicked, uh, 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 basically trouble is going to come to him, right? Roughly paraphrasing, Salakia, right? So um, let's get it again. James 4 and verse uh, verse 8, draw nigh unto the heavenly father and he will draw nigh unto you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. What is that talking about? Being double-minded, right? So let's get it back, right? So so we understand how to, how to, how to what? Uh, uh. Draw nigh into the heavenly father, how to get, how to get strengthened, how to get that worry up off of us. I want to continue uh, with the topic of, of what, like talking about worry, you see what I'm saying? Because that is on some uh, uh, brothers and sisters, especially new, uh, 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 new believers, man. You may be a year or two in the faith, you know, you might still have some doubts, man. Hey, you got to purge that out of you, man. Right. And the one way to do that is with the, with the scriptures. I want to grab James 1 and 5, but I'll, man, I'm going to just go ahead and grab it because I want to get back to this worry thing, you know, just to help. Akim and Akwaf that may be struggling with this. Um, Cause I know, I, you know, I mean, I, I remember, you know, I was a couple years in like, Hey, listen, you know what I'm saying? You're not going to be fully on point, but Hey, listen, you know what I mean? In terms of like, it still might be things that you're struggling with. You see what I'm saying? That's fine and dandy, but you have to make the necessary steps to what? To, to do better, man. Right. To what? To, 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 to have that faith, man. You have to put in the work. You see what I'm saying? It's plain and simple. You see what I'm saying? You have to show the heavenly father that you want it. And in return, if he sees that sincere hearted effort that you really want it, and he's going to bestow it upon you. Right. Right. James chapter one and verse five, it says, if any of you lack wisdom. Right. This is this is interchangeable. You can change. You can. Uh, 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 it says wisdom, but you can you, you can use this like it's the same concept for all of it, whether you lack faith, wisdom, uh, knowledge, you know, whatever it be that you that, that you need. Right. Ask the heavenly father for it. And he's going to give it to you. That gonna, that's going to please him. You see what I'm saying? Right? Because you see the example when King Solomon, right? When it came time for him to rule after King David, what did he do? He asked for wisdom from the heavenly father, right? And the heavenly father saw that to be a uh, 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 pleasing unto him because he didn't ask for the life of his enemy or great riches or women or none of that, right? What he did was he asked for wisdom to judge a great nation such as Israel. You see what I'm saying? That pleased the heavenly father that he asked for something spiritual like that. And then in return... He didn't just give him the wisdom. He gave him wisdom, right? But he said, isn't it going to be another king better than you, right? And then on top of that, he gave him everything that he didn't ask for, the riches, all of that, the peace on every side, peace from his enemies, all of that, man, right? So James 1 and 5, if any of you lack wisdom, you can say faith, right? 
So it says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of the heavenly father that giveth to all men liberally and a braid of not and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith. You see that word faith again. Right. So it's talking about purging out that doubt. You can't handle that doubt in your mind. Right. When you ask in the heavenly father, you got to come strong and, and come boldly before the name before the throne. You see what I'm saying? It says, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wave or uh, wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven uh, with the wind and toss. You see what I'm saying? Let not for let not that man think that he shall receive anything from the heavenly father. So you ain't going to receive nothing. You got to come to the heavenly father believing that you're going he going to come through for everything that, that you just asked for. That's how it go. You see what I'm saying? Right. If somebody coming to you like this. Right. Check this out. Uh, people call me Jay in the world. Right. At the job and stuff. <sighs> Jay. You sure uh, I need you to do this? You, you sure you're going to get it done? Like, fuck, bro, get out of my favor. I'm not, I'm not doing nothing for you. You see what I'm saying? I don't want to do nothing for you now because now you're already doubting me. You see what I'm saying? Now, now I put you last on the list. You see what I'm saying? That's the point. So it's like it's kind of like an insult, man. You see what I'm saying? So when you come to the Heavenly Father, you got to be, oh, I, look, look at all that I did for y'all. Like, it's like our people coming out of, uh, uh, coming out of the, uh, 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 Egypt. And they, and they sitting there and brought and the Heavenly Father brought them through the Red Sea and they complaining, man. It's, a, it's, it's like a, it's an insult. So you got to come to the Heavenly Father with, 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 with faith, man. And if you don't and if you lack faith, hey, listen, ask the Heavenly Father for it and he'll give it to you, man. Right. Well, let's get this Mark 9 and 24, because you may say, oh, right, well, I lack the faith even to do that. Well, check this out. Right. Mark. Mark 9 and 24. Right. Let's go ahead and grab this beautiful scripture. Right. Love this scripture. Mark 9 and 24, right? It says, um, I'm going to start at verse 22, right? It was a man and he had a son, which was possessed by a devil, right? Demons, right? And his de these demons often tried to make the boy commit suicide, which also shows you that a lot of these people that be committing suicide, who be having these demons, like, like, like they be trying to cut themselves and stuff like that. They be having demons on them, man. It just be demons. We to understand the spiritual aspect of all of this, right? We understand. Let's read it again. Matthew 9 and 22. And often, and oftentimes, to lock it, and oftentimes it have cast him into fire, right? It says, and oftentimes they cast him, cast him into fire, into waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Yahweh said unto them, unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. So like it, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child, so so it was the, fa the father of the child, right? Said to Yahweh, said uh, with tears, out of one I believe, help thou my unbelief. That's the point. So the point is, hey, listen, you gotta wrap the heavenly father, right? Respectfully, right? And and and, and that's the point, man, because you got some people that oh yeah, Jesus Christ, my homeboy. Man, you tripping, right? You got when you come to the when you come to the throne, you come before the throne boldly, right? Meaning you having that faith, that 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 confidence in the heavenly Father, but also you come respectfully. You understand? So that's the point. Like, you know, the heavenly Father, He's there for us, man. He's not some like just like He He, he like He just a, like a tyrant. No, He He cares for us, man. So if you come into the heavenly Father and you ask Him for the increase of the Spirit, you ask Him for more wisdom. These things are profitable. He's gonna give them to you, man. As long as you come. And faith, man, right? Doubting nothing, right? So the point, believing that you already gonna receive what it is that you asked for, right? So going back to Second Ezra fourteen and verse 13, uh, fourteen, right? And these are all things that you want to implement now because if not, when Jacob's trouble come, hey, listen, that's game time. You see what I'm saying? It's that's game time, and we see that Jacob's trouble is fastly approaching, right? And this is where a lot of new believers, hey, listen, hey, you know, you gotta make sure you on it because. Hey, the time is short, brother. You see what I'm saying? We about to be in game time. We about to be in crunch time. You see what I'm saying? The Heavenly Father going to be there for, for even, a sense, uh, even the new believers, right? That's just coming into the fold. But hey, listen, you got some work to do too. You see what I'm saying? So the point of the matter is you got to buckle down. It ain't play time. You see what I'm saying? You can enjoy yourself. You can do good unto yourself, but you do have to buckle down. You see what I'm saying? That's the point, especially if you just coming in, right? Because, right, what you want to be doing is purging off that stuff from the world, right? So the point of the matter is, right, um, the point of the matter is you want to be, you want to be built, you want to be implementing these things now and building yourself up now, your most holy faith now. So that way when Jacob's trouble come, which is right around the corner, according to all of the prophecies that's happening right now, you want to make sure you're on point. So that way when the time comes, you're not left with your, with, with your hand out. You see what I'm saying? Right? Like it talks about, where is it at? Matthew, the 25th chapter, the parable of the 10 virgins. 
That's the point, right? So fit for uh, second Ezra 14 and verse 14, and this goes for not just new, since there are new believers as well. It goes for brothers that have been in this for a while too, you know, such as myself. You see what I'm saying? You know, I, you know, I, you know, I've been in for going on go, uh, like like six, seven years, well, like seven years going on eight soon. You see what I'm saying? So the point is, right? Like, hey, let's this go for all of us, man. You see what I'm saying? So let's let's read on. It says, um, second Ezra chapter 14. And verse, uh, where we at? Verse 14. Let go from the mortal thoughts, cast away the burdens of man, put off down the weak nature, and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee, and haste to flee from these times. So that's the point. What is it about? We were we about hastening uh, to get up out of here. But the point of the matter is, right now in these times, hey, listen, things are going to get continually worse here in Babylon. But you should have the faith, right, to what? Cast off from you mortal thoughts. Don't worry about the burdens of man. And what's some of the burdens of man? What you shall eat, what you shall drink, all of these things, man, right? We need to worry. We, we Listen, let's get uh, the scripture say the best, right? Scripture says it the best. Matthew chapter 6, right? And it's titled worry, right? Matthew 6 and 25. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What you shall eat or what you shall drink, these are all mortal thoughts. You see what I'm saying? Mortal thoughts, right? So these are showing you that it says, take no thought of your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, for not yet, it's like it, not nor yet for your body, what you shall put on, right? It, it is not life, it's like it is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. Behold, the fowls of the air, meaning like the birds, right? For, for they sow not, meaning they don't plant nothing. They don't even plant no fruit, no vegetables, nothing. Neither do they reap. So they they not harvest nothing. They don't even do nothing. They just fly around. They don't plant nothing. They don't do nothing. They just they just go around and eat every day. Though they fed. You see what I'm saying? Check it out. It says neither do they reap nor gather into barns. They don't store nothing up crazy. It says, but it's like yet your yet your heavenly Father feed of them. Are you not much more better than birds? So when you understand that, it, 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 it puts you in a mindset of like, damn, that's true. Heavenly Father in control of all the spirits on the earth, even the, even the spirits of the animals, the spirits of us, right? We understand that there's uh, the Heavenly Father controls everything. He knows the end from the beginning, right? So he has the master plan. His end result, what is to give us the kingdom, Luke 12 and 32, it is, is our Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. We understand that, Right? We understand everybody ain't going to just get wiped out. You see what I'm saying? What, what I mean by that? The elect remnant, all, all of Israel is prophesied at what? One third and 144,000 is going to be delivered. Right. And I don't want to write this as long as you be faithful and be diligent. Like the scriptures say, you're going to be of that one third, 144,000, as long as you do that and endure it to the end. Plain and simple. Right. So the point of the matter is if the heavenly father takes care of birds and animals and they should make sure they get the uh, uh, daily food and they don't have the, the, uh, uh, the instinct to you know, to, to do no type of farming and agricultural stuff like that. And he takes care of them. How much more are you who he gave the wisdom to the knowledge, the understanding of the scriptures, right? Which is, which is counted as a blessing, which is counted as mercy. So why would he give that to you? Right. And you doing faithful works, good, faithful uh, uh, works, a good pattern of good works and just toss you to the side. That don't make no sense, man. If you're doing right, if you're doing right, that's the only point because you could be, you could have it and then you can go off. That's when he going to do you dirt. He going to do you in, Right. But the point is, man, if you're doing right, you got nothing to worry about. Nothing. Take that off, man. Push it to the side. Stomp on it. Cast that worry out, man. Cast that doubt. You know what I'm saying? You got to cast it out of your mind, man. You see what I'm saying? Because that shit is, uh, it's like that doubt is infectious, man. You see what I'm saying? It's infectious and you have to purge it, man. Right? So that's the point, man. The Heavenly Father is giving you that spirit of wisdom. Let's go ahead and grab this, right? Because now what this is showing you, right? It says, which, which, which of you, by t uh, verse 27, which of you taking thought can add a cubit to his stature, right? All right, going on. Let me see. Let me see, y'all. Yeah. This is the point. I I'm going to skip down to verse 33. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of the heavenly father and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Take, take therefore no thought for tomorrow. For tomorrow shall take thought of the things for itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So the point is, hey, today got enough issues, man. Don't worry about tomorrow, man. Handle the day, hand, handle what you got to handle today, man. You know, it's not, this is not saying, brothers, be, be, be negligent. Don't take care of your bills. Don't think about how you're going to budget, things like that. No, you know what I'm saying? Be responsible. But it's telling you, don't be tripping, man. What's going to happen to Jacob's trouble? I'm not going to be cool. Yes, man. If you're doing good, you straight. That's what the scriptures say, right? So let's get this. It says, um, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter six. 
Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6 and verse 20. Where was it at? Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6 and verse 22, right? It says, as for wisdom, what she is and how she came up, I will tell you, right? I ain't it. It's locked in. Wisdom of Solomon 6 and 15. There you go. Wisdom of Solomon 6 and 15. To think therefore upon her, wisdom is like unto a woman, right? So it says... It says, to think therefore upon her is perfection of wisdom. And whoso watcheth for her shall quickly be without care. So the point is, right? You, 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 you put in the heavenly, like Slaki, you, you, uh, the heavenly father instilling this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in you, it should make you what? Quickly without care because you understand, right? That the heavenly father is in control of all this, man. So the, the fact of the matter that, that the heavenly father is in control of all this shows that what, man? He's in control. The heavenly father, he's the one in control. So meaning that what? Hey, listen, if he has a good will towards us, right? And we understand that part, right? What you worrying about, man? He don't want to control of all this. The issues of life and death concern of him, right? And if he promises long life unto you, if he promises salvation and, and deliverance and protection, you have nothing to worry about, man. The heavenly father does not have an evil intent towards us, man, right? If that was the case, you wouldn't have made it this far. You see what I'm saying? You wouldn't have made it this far. You see what I'm saying? Now, the Heavenly Father does know how to wait, uh, uh, be patient and wait until the end is just to get somebody in, in, in that security. But if you know you're doing right, then you know what I mean? You're not going to have no guilty conscience. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 9. For the Heavenly Father have not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by Adawan Nawi Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. That's the point. He has not appointed us to wrath. So the point is, if you ain't doing nothing wrong, you ain't got nothing to worry about. But if you are, if you are doing things wrong, this is your time to clean up now. You see what I'm saying? This is this is that warning. Clean up. You see what I'm saying? Clean up. Do right. Because the Heavenly Father still giving you an opportunity, man. You see what I'm saying? So do right, man. And and, and basically, hey, good is gonna come to you, man. So hey, I don't want to write desire you sincere that you believe is edified, exhorting and comfort. And I want to give all glory honor, and praise unto my power, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shah. Shalom. So you sincere that you believe is keep fighting, keep pushing. You're almost home, man. Shalom. Death to America.